welcome to Health Vision. I'm Jackie Wolf, Associate Professor of Social Medicine at Ohio University. Today I'm talking to Dr. Anita Showalter, a physician serving Ohio's, Ohio's Amish and Mennonite communities, and Dr. Todd R. Myers, President of the Medical Staff at Marietta Memorial Hospital. We're going to be talking about the cesarean section rate in the U.S. Thank you, both of you, for being here today. Um, Dr. Myers, let me ask you first. A lot of people, obviously, we all think we know what a cesarean section is, but let's start with something very basic. What is a cesarean section and under what conditions do women have cesarean sections? Well, I think the easiest definition is just to say it's the surgical removal of the baby as opposed to a vaginal delivery. And some people refer to it as abdominal birth because basically the baby does. Right, a baby comes through an abdominal incision instead of through the uh, birth canal. And under what conditions, and I know there are many, and maybe you could jump in here too, Dr. Showalter, mm -hmm. um, under what conditions do women have cesarean sections? Well, the most common condition that leads to a cesarean section is something we call cephalopelvic disproportion, which just means that the uh, baby's head size relative to the size of the, the uh, maternal pelvis, um, the, the baby's head's too big to fit through the birth canal or else the mother's pelvis is too small is or a variation of that. Can you explain, I mean that's a, the kind of diagnosis that has been, it's, it's diagnosed a lot more often today than it was say 60 years ago. Does anyone know the explanation for that? Why is a diagnosis like that? It's become a diagnosis that happens very mm -hmm. often as opposed to extremely rarely. Any ideas why? One of the differences is sizes of babies. Uh, our diets are very different, uh, which can lead to uh, maybe the pelvis not being as big as it was if a, if a child doesn't have a good diet growing up. And then if she has a poor diet that grows a very large baby, that baby may not fit. But um, there's other things that can factor into that. Um, one is the position that the baby's coming down in the pelvis. And actually uh, having poor posture or sitting in soft, easy chairs that has the back sink into it uh, helps the baby come in the posterior position, which is face up, makes it harder for the baby to come down. So our cushy lifestyle actually can contribute to a bad presentation of the baby and therefore an increased rate in uh, those kinds of presentations. And are there ways then to, you talked about what's referred to a kind of sunny side up position if mm -hmm. babies come out face up, which is not the desirable way to come down, you want them face down. Are there right. ways to turn babies? Um, it's not easy, but if a mom is willing to change positions in labor, uh, being on her hands and knees, rolling from side to side, squatting, can open up the pelvis larger than the pelvis would be otherwise, uh, could allow a baby that would be a tight squeeze otherwise to fit through. Let's talk about your different backgrounds because both of you have different types of practices. You practice in very different places and that's one of the reasons why we're talking about the cesarean section rate with both of you because your section rates are different and your approaches to birth are a bit different. Um, Dr. Myers, talk a little bit about the practice you're in, um, the type of hospital that you worked at and what your medical background is. Well, there's a, I'm in a group of, I'm in a group practice with uh, three physicians and uh, I'm one of the three and uh, we uh, take turns being on call at, in the evenings uh, to deliver the babies and I, uh, you know, we're in Marietta, Ohio, which we deliver about 600 births uh, a year at the hospital there and uh, I have a very traditional medical background with going to a uh, medical school at West Virginia University and, and uh, residency at Marshall University. Um, you know, so I, a lot of my teachers were, um, and professors were doctors that trained in the uh, 50s and 60s. And uh, so a lot of that knowledge got imparted to me, but you know, we're, we're smart enough to know that medicine changes over time. And, and I feel that, you know, uh, most of obstetricians nowadays aren't, aren't stuck in the old mindset of, of ways to deliver babies and we realize that there's, a, there's a new thoughts and new methods in, in delivering babies and, and really nothing's new, it's just we're bringing back some old things that uh, maybe were kind of pushed to the side in traditional medicine, but uh, I like to think I have a, a good mix of, of the ideas and thoughts that uh, are prevalent. Tell me what you mean exactly when you talk about um, old ideas that might have been pushed to the side that you're mm -hmm. kind of bringing back. What specifically are, th are you thinking of when you say that? Well, the uh, 
a lot of things that Dr. Showalter is talking about, just uh, different positions. And a lot of these things are, are things that midwives have, have talked about for years that, uh, you know, I, I, I guess um, in some ways um, physicians uh, in their training, we get taught so much the, the medical science and things that have been proven through, you know, papers and research that we really emphasize that, whereas you know, it's it's sometimes hard to prove why some things work that midwives have been doing for hundreds of years, but but yet we kind of know they do work, and and you just have to you have to look beyond, you know, just what what's proven sometimes. Yeah, Dr. Showalter and I we were talking last week mm -hmm. about I, I was telling the story about um, I have just recently talked to an obstetrician who works at Chicago Lying in Hospital, University of Chicago Hospital. And she was saying that when they had a midwifery service, when she was a resident, she learned so much from the midwives. The midwifery service has since been closed, and now the residents don't get a chance to learn that kind of approach to birth. Mm -hmm. So it's very much what, what you're saying is that when you're going through an obstetric residency, you learn a lot about emergencies, you learn a lot about what to do in all kinds of situations, mm -hmm. and sometimes normal birth can be neglected. We talked about that a little bit last week, and you're describing that mm -hmm. a little bit, that some of the tried and true uh, methods over the years sometimes mm -hmm. that are that are now being brought back have kind of they're not really being residents are kind of trained. resurfaced yeah mm -hmm. dr. Showalter talk about your now your patient base is very different and your medical clinic is very different describe that a little bit uh, my primary patient base is Amish and Mennonite uh, these people have a philosophy that uh, they like natural they like non-intervention uh, they have large families so anything that adds to the risk factors in delivery can significantly impact not only their finances, but their future health. Uh, for example, if a person's only having one or two babies, to have an elective C-section doesn't greatly increase her risk uh, during delivery. But if she's going to have four, five, six, or more C-sections, then the risk to the mother goes way, way up. So these ladies want large families, they want normal deliveries. So we work really, really hard to accomplish that for them. And we know too, not just the risk to the mother, but the more C-sections you have, the more placental anomalies you have too. Right. You can have all kinds of problems with, um, describe some of those problems you can have with the placenta after three, four C-sections. The most serious complications with the placenta are what we call placenta previa. That means the afterbirth lays low uh, in covering the birth canal. So uh, the baby can't come through without, um, without losing the baby. And those are very prone to bleed heavily, and that can be life-threatening to the mom and the baby. Also along with that is when you have a previa after a number of C-sections, you can have what's called an accreta, where the, the placenta actually grows into the wall of the uterus and can't be separated. Uh, that's treated with a hysterectomy after delivery with usually very, very large blood loss and significant risk to the mother. So um, these are things that we are now seeing in greater numbers since uh, the C-section rate's gotten so high. Yeah, it's something, it's an extraordinary number, four to six times the incidence if you've had mm -hmm. more than three cesarean sections. Right. Um, Dr. Myers, let's talk a little bit about the current C-section rate. It has mm -hmm. changed drastically in the last 35 years. In 1965, it was below 4%.